Well, not to, not to make it sound too dramatic, but the, the line of Nestorenko, Harkins, and Colangelo, it felt like they were really playing like their lives depended on it tonight. Yeah, and they play, I, they play like that um, same way. I think they've been together, it might have been the third game or at least the second because they were together against L.A. They were together in um, the San Jose game too because we did like the, the analytics is a different analytic um, program that we look at that had that line like in the high 60s, which is really impressive. And I'm sure they were in that same range tonight. They just they just have a, a real fast motors and they they reload quick, they forecheck quick, they finish checks, they put pressure on people. I'm you know, really you know, pleased with their performance. It felt like um, you got a lot of out, out of the bottom six tonight. What did you kind of see from uh, Ross? Gauthier and McGinn tonight. Well, honestly, I, I really impressed with Nathan. He hasn't skated in a long time. Um, he worked his rear end off this summer. He put really functional weight on. Um, he needed to work on his flexibility, and uh, that was you know part of the program to get him to improve his skating and to lengthen his stride and do some things that would make him a little bit more dynamic um, skating. And he did a great job. Um, we hadn't really seen him. He was, I think, for one or two practices. But to come in in an exhibition game, I mean, even it's an exhibition game, there's still NHL players on the ice. Uh, starting on the face-off circle, he was, I think he was above 50%. He won some key face-offs. He finished checks. Uh, I think he did all those things that uh, when Pat and his, his staff scouted him before the draft, they were visible when he won a Memorial Cup. So. Really, like, really happy for him. He did a terrific job. Like, it's a great way to start, and so proud of him to go through the summer like that, make the commitment to do what he was asked to do, and then see that come to fruition in this first game. How was the two goals in 50 seconds a pivotal moment in the game? But beyond that, the, the players in particular, you get Cutter and Leo kind of flashing some promise, I guess, I'm sure, hope to have for a long time. And uh, newcomers there with Tristan, hopefully, hopefully this year, uh, Fabry coming in. Uh, just what did you see in the uh, in terms of that four and four situation, um, they had those those guys are dangerous in open ice. Um, I just told them actually in the between periods there was a number of times we could have shot the puck in the second period, and you saw it got scrambly. They didn't really have much for the first eight minutes. And then we started turning pucks over and chose not to shoot it instead of dropping it to a guy that was further away from the net. We had some, I thought some um, inefficient decisions with the puck. So I, I told him after the second period that we've got to be a shoot first team. And then the first rush we get, Leo doesn't shoot it and he throws it back to a to cut it for the goal, right? So you're dealing with the, uh, you know, some elite plays with elite IQs, but you still want to create that mentality where we're going to shoot it. But um, they're both dangerous. I thought, uh, I thought Robbie Fabry was probably our best player in terms of visibility on both sides of the puck is compete level four check and his penalty kill and his back checking his physicality and that, that to me was super impressive some of the older guys may not play at the same pace he played but uh, he did the same thing his first game I, I was really happy with him you mentioned that stress in the second I think you guys were out shot like 20 to 7 19 to 7 uh, obviously Dostal uh, mm -hmm. big in that situation just the, obviously you've seen a lot of him early in the season with Gibby out uh, just where do you think his game is at uh, year over year I guess well, the, like, I think it's been well written. He's an extremely um, well-prepared athlete. I mean, he's, he does everything right in terms of his preparation, his visualization, his, his off-ice off conditioning, excuse me, his preparation with, with boots prior to a game. He's a consummate pro. Um, he's a very humble kid, but he's also very confident. And... Um, you know, I expect him to play well. I don't, I don't, I don't foresee any issues with with Dost in terms of building on what he did last year. Uh, three of the five goals were scored directly off puck retrievals and funneling mm -hmm. them towards the net. Is it nice to see what the principles even still in practice kind of come to fruition here? Yeah, it goes back to what I asked. You know, between the second and third periods about shooting more pucks at the net. Um, you know, we have to do it, and we. I, I get it. There's gonna like when you have a two on one, and Leo makes that pass, and then Robbie went down with Luno, and you've got that open space, and they can use their skill. They have to use it. That's why they play the game. But when you are in a crowded area, and you're not gonna really, you know, be able to have the space to make those plays, you've got to respect the fact that a shot directed at the net 
is probably going to generate a second shot. And that's been the messaging. And I think they'll find the balance. Um, you know, it was nice. Gudis went down the bench and said, hey, like, let's be responsible with the puck here. And, and we got a young team, and I think the veterans know that when you start sacrificing shots, what's put, put the action in their zone uh, and trade that for these lateral passes that could result in our zone, which is what happened in the second period, the young guys, they don't see that, you know. And when the older guys that have won and have been the finals and won Stanley Cups know the value of that, and, and they're telling the, their teammates that it's to me it's a win-win situation. It seemed like you guys were also getting more zone time, getting up the ice a little cleaner. Obviously, some veteran D in there, but a couple of young guys. Well, what did you see that was working well in the, the D forward exchange tonight? Well, we got it up quick. I mean, I I, I think um, Utah's they're going to be one of the fastest teams we play. I mean, we you know they were probably missing six or seven really good forwards that are going to. I think really personify their team identity, which is speed, that D get up into the play. They were missing three or four of them. So it's going to be a different team that we play in a week or two. Um, but in that in that type of game, you've got to move the puck quick. You can't use your legs to carry the puck. You're going to get swallowed up by either forechecking four pressure or back, back pressure. And uh, I think the first period we got kind of caught off guard a little bit, and then we started to move it quickly and catch them in transition. And um, they're a good team. I mean, they're going to, they're going to, they're gonna be good. They got they got a lot of weapons offensively. They're tenacious. They're you know even for a smaller team, they finish checks. They get inside hands and sticks, and yeah, they're gonna be a handful. What did you see from Beckett Seneca in his first taste of NHL action? Um, I saw a young guy that's extremely confident. You can see the plays he made. You know, a lot of them didn't connect, but you can see what he's looking at. And he had, like I said, you know. Talking to somebody before the game about his IQ on the ice, and you know he's an elite thinker. Like he's a step ahead of everybody. You know there are guys that, you know, their first pass players. Like he's a second pass player. Like he's already made the first pass in his head, and he's looking to go where the second pass is going to be. Um, you can see it in the way he way he moves the puck and how he uses his body. Um, you know he's still growing. I think when he fills out and. He's a 210-pound guy. He's going to be a handful, too. You talked about directness and chemistry ahead of this one. I think both those things kind of shone through a little bit more. What are you looking for in the, in the preseason finale coming up? Well, we've got to continue to build on the, you know, the identity and the, I think, and the rhythm that we played with tonight when we played well. Um, you know, it's nothing like game reps, even though it's exhibition. It's totally different than, you know, we practice against each other, and there's just a different pace to it. There's different intensity to it. Um, so these games, particularly the last two games, for me are really valuable just for the players to get their timing down. It seems like the competition to the top six is just getting more tougher. What's going to go into finally figuring out what separates you know, the second, third line? Well, it, you know, it, it's funny you say that because when the game was over, I was looking at my my lineup chart, you know, getting you know putting the practice together for tomorrow, and you know the, we started this this discussion about. Uh, Hawkins line, which arguably is one of the more visible lines. You know, all three of those guys, are, they're, they're, they're heavy players. They're firm players. You know, they play the style of hockey that I think Pat is constantly talking about, the relentless style, the physical style, second effort built into their game. And then then you forget you don't have Frankie, you don't have Z, you don't have Stromy. Um, I'm missing a couple guys. We don't have Leeson, we don't have Lundy. So you have five, five or so forwards that didn't play. You know, and then it's a nice problem to have, like how do you fit these people in in that third or fourth line slot? But it's good, it's a healthy competition. I, I think the guys that are watching are probably, I hope they're identifying with the way that with that with that third line played, the pace and the intensity, and, and whether you're on the first line or the third or fourth line, that's that's the way we've got to play here. That's the kind of the culture we're building. Like a mixture of young and old, like one veteran, a couple of young guys on the line would work. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's a, Pat and I will have a, a, a good, healthy discussion about it. Okay.